Right now is probably the worst time in recent memory to build a gaming PC. Thanks in part to the global silicon shortage and the cryptocurrency mining boom that makes getting a GPU nearly impossible. But on the flip side of that coin, AMD is producing their most powerful APU out that we've ever seen. Now an APU or accelerated processing unit is basically a CPU with integrated graphics. Now, Intel has that as well, but AMD has kind of always led the pack in terms of integrated graphics with their Ryzen chips. The problem though, is that you can't buy it. You can't just buy a Ryzen 5000 series APU. You have to go to a big brand computer manufacturer like HP, and that's what I did. Here is an HP Pavilion TP012066, complete with AMD's most powerful APU in the Ryzen 7 5700G. So it must be awesome, right? Not quite. Unfortunately, I have some major issues with what HP has done with this chip. Let's take a look. Okay, let's read off the spec sheet. For CPU, obviously, this comes with the Ryzen 7 5700G. For RAM, we have 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz. The motherboard is a custom HP proprietary motherboard. That's quite common with these large computer manufacturers. For storage, they provide a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, so not bad. It also comes with onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2, along with a pretty decent port selection on the front and on the rear. All of this at a cost of $550 retail. So what's the issue? Well, you'll see in a couple minutes. First thing, let's jump into some benchmarks. So the first benchmark I ran was Cinebench R20, and this machine scored 5,240. Now, to put that in context, my main workstation computer running a 9900K from Intel barely cracked 5,000. So this chip in a Pavilion generic desktop from HP is scoring higher than a flagship overclocked processor from Intel from just a couple of years ago. That's crazy. Next, we ran Geekbench and Geekbench gave us a score of 11,327, which is a respectable score and nothing really to complain about for this price range. But when you compare that to other systems with the exact same processor, you'll notice that this score is a lot lower than what we were expecting. And that trend continues when we run Time Spy from 3 Mark. We got a score of 892, which again, for this price range for a full computer build, isn't terrible, but it's certainly far away from what we were expecting with this processor. Moving on from benchmarks, let's jump into some games. And here you'll really see why I have such a problem with this machine. First, we ran some League of Legends at 1080p and high settings. Now, League of Legends can be run with a toaster, so I wanted to throw something easy at it. Now, we did get 136 FPS with those settings, which is good. That's perfectly fine if you wanna play League of Legends on the system. But let's jump into something a little more demanding, like Fortnite. So Fortnite, we did the same 1080p, high settings, but we were getting 18 FPS, 18, that is not playable. And from all the research I've done on this processor, I know for a fact that is nowhere near where this processor should be. And that continues on into Call of Duty Warzone. Same thing, I set it to 1080p, but I bumped the graphics settings down to low and we were getting an unplayable 18 FPS. For the last game, I decided to run The Witcher 3, which is a good benchmark game that I like to run for a lot of these systems. And to give it a fighting chance, I set the resolution down to 720p and graphic settings down to low. And we got a playable 26 FPS. But again, fine for the cost of this machine in the 
current climate we're in, but still not where we want it to be. So what's the issue? Here are my issues with this system. First off, yes, it comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, but it comes with a single stick. Now, if you don't know anything about RAM, you would probably say, so what? But this motherboard supports dual channel RAM. It's just like 99.9% .9 of motherboards these days. And you are 100% going to want to take advantage of dual channel, meaning you have at least two sticks in the correct slots. Now there's only two slots in this motherboard. So obviously you would just use those two slots. So right off the bat, I knew we were going to see a performance decrease based on only using single channel RAM. Another issue that I noticed is that, yes, the spec sheet says that they provide you with 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM, but this motherboard does not support that. This motherboard will only run RAM up to 2133 megahertz. So it doesn't matter if you have 3200 megahertz or 2133 megahertz RAM, it will only run it up to 2133. So what did I do? Um, well, I had some RAM laying around, so I figured, okay, how about we throw in two sticks and see what kind of performance increase we get. And you'll probably be a little surprised about the performance increase we get just by adding another stick of RAM. So I threw in two sticks of RAM. Each stick of RAM was 16 gigabytes. So now we have a total of 32. Uh, that doesn't really matter. The capacity of the RAM in this scenario for gaming 16 versus 32 isn't gonna make a difference. Uh, this RAM was also 3000 megahertz, but again, this motherboard will only run it at 2133, severely handicapping this processor. In Cinebench, we now have a score of 5190. Wait, that's, it's actually a little lower. Okay, yes. In certain scenarios like CPU intensive workloads, single channel and dual channel may not make a big difference. Now this is within the realm of uh, it could have been hotter in the room when I ran it, so it could have throttled a little bit, but that's negligible. The real performance increase is gonna come from workloads involving your CPU and your GPU. So when we ran Geekbench again, we now have a score close to 16,000, which is a major increase. Same thing in 3 Mark. We now have a score of 1329, which is close to double of what we had before all because HP decided to ship it with single channel. Okay, let's throw the same games at it with the same settings. League of Legends, we went from 136 to 192. Call of Duty, 18 to 30. Fortnite, 17 to 28. And The Witcher, 26 to 39. So as you can see, a major increase in performance of this machine in terms of gaming and workloads involving graphics just by adding another stick of RAM. Now you could argue that, oh, well, HP gave you a 16 gigabyte stick and left another slot open for you to easily uh, upgrade it yourself. I guess so, but the marketing of it is what's misleading. If I'm buying a desktop like this, I am probably not in the demographic that is going to open it and thoroughly inspect and test these types of things, much less know that dual channel RAM is gonna run much more efficiently and faster for this machine. Which brings me to another con. There are zero overclocking features that you can utilize for this system. I understand why manufacturers wanna do that. It keeps uh, them in check in terms of tolerances and what you're allowed to do with the hardware in terms of warranties and whatnot, but come on, you are handicapping this processor. What is this computer for? Well, I fired up Premiere Pro and loaded in one of my timelines from a previous video and it was pretty decent performance. I mean, I'm not gonna get the amazing performance that I am from my main workstation with a dedicated RTX 2080, but I mean, this is certainly a content creator focused machine, especially with a nice touch of adding an SD card reader on the front. I will give you 
a one-handed clap for that. But overall, um, I find this hard to recommend. I mean, if you get one, it's fine. Just know that it is not gonna be what you're expecting in terms of gaming. It will handle production stuff and you will be able to browse the internet extremely quickly on this machine. But um, due to all the handicaps HP has put in place for this processor, I definitely can't recommend it as is for someone looking for a budget gaming machine. But I have a plan. I just ordered parts to assemble my own gaming PC using the processor that's in here. So I'm basically just gonna rip this processor out, put it in a motherboard that can actually push it to its expected limits, and we're gonna run a comparison to see how this fares against something that can actually use that processor. So if that sounds interesting to you, Make sure you're subscribed so you're notified when that video comes out. But if you like this video, be sure to drop a like below. Comment below if you've actually bought this and what kind of experience you've had with uh, HP's desktops. And, and if you actually have a Ryzen APU, how's it performing for you? Let me know. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.